Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Madanadbi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basic terminologies about cylindrical coordinates. And then we will learn how we can evaluate triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. For this purpose, first of all, we must know how cylindrical coordinates are represented in three dimension space. Cylindrical coordinates represent a point P in space. This point P, we are talking about this point P by an order triplets R, theta, and C, in which R and theta are the polar coordinates of the vertical projection of P on the XY plane. Z is the rectangular vertical coordinate. Now, what is the concept here? If we consider a two-dimension space like this X, X, and Y, X is only, then the coordinate of this point, then the coordinate of this point in polar coordinates will be R and theta. And if you lift this point vertically with respect to Z, then, this, the, then the coordinates of this point become R theta and Z. Now, this will make a cylindrical coordinate system. Next, we will learn about the transformation equation of the cylindrical coordinate system. In cylindrical coordinate system, the transformation equations are x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, and z is equal to z means in both cylindrical coordinates and Cartesian coordinate system or rectangular coordinate system, the third x is z remain as it is. The value of r square is r square is equal to x square plus y square and tan theta is equal to y over x. Moreover, a small differential volume in the cylindrical coordinates can be written as dv is equal to dz r dr d theta, which means in the process of integration of triple integrals, we will always follow this order. Now have a look on this question. Exercise 15.7, 15 15 question number six from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. In this question, our most inner variable is Z, our central variable is R, and our outer variable is theta. In cylindrical coordinate system, this ordering is fixed. We will always perform integration first with respect to Z, then with respect to R, and then with respect to theta. Now, in order to perform integration, please note that the limits of Z are minus one by two to one by two, Limits of r are 0 to 1, and limits of theta are 0 to 2 pi. Now, before starting this question, we must revise this small example or this small question from single variable calculus. If we had to integrate 3x plus 5 with respect to x, then how we will integrate it? 3 remain as it is, and we will integrate x as x squared over 2, plus the integration of 5 is 5x plus c. In this question, there are two types of constant involved. One constant is 3 and other constant is 5. The constant 3 is being multiplied, remain as it is. And we have performed the process of integration on x term. So we get x squared over 2. Whereas the constant which is free from variable, what we will do? We will write down the variable with respect to which we are performing the integration. Now, see here, with respect to z, r and theta will behave like constant. Whenever you are performing integration or partial derivatives, you are calculating partial derivatives, please remember that with respect to one variable, all other variables behave like constant. So in this term, r square sine square theta is constant with respect to z. And here, this r square sine square theta will behave like just five, which, is, which I have explained in this example. Now, performing the integration with respect to z, we have r square sine square theta into z plus the integration of z square is z cube over 3. For the given limits, minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2. In the next step, applying the limits, upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, we have replaced z with 1 by 2. And for lower limit, we have replaced z with minus 1 by 2. So when we replace z with 1 by 2, we have r square sine square theta 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 1 into 1 by 2 whole cube. Similarly r square sine square theta minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 into minus 1 by 2 whole cube. In the next step, opening up the brackets and making a simplification, we have r square sine square theta into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 24. From here, minus minus become plus r square sine theta into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 24. Now, r square sine square theta over 2, r square sine square theta over 2 become r square sine square theta. And 1 over 24 plus 1 over 24 become 1 over 2. So up till here, we have completed the process of integration with respect to z. 
In the next step, we will start performing the process of integration with respect to R. For this purpose, we will multiply with R the terms inside the brackets. When we multiply the term inside the brackets with R, we have R cube sine squared theta plus R over 12. Now, we can integrate both terms by using this formula. X raised to power n dx is equal to x raised to power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Now the integration of r raised to power r raised to power 3 will be r raised to power 4 over 4. And the integration of r is r squared over 2. So we have this term making the simplification. And in the next step, we can apply fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate some limits, upper limit minus lower limit. Uh, here the lower limit is zero, so the second bracket becomes zero, and we are left only with first bracket. So we have one over four sine squared theta plus one by twenty-four d theta. Now, up till here we have completed the process of integration with respect to r, and now on we will apply the process of integration with respect to theta for the limit zero to two pi. Please note that we don't have any direct formula for the integration of sine square, so we can replace it with one minus cos two theta over two a trigonometric identity so that I can reduce its power to one. And in this step, I have also apply the integral on each term. In the next step, making the simplification, one by four into two become one by eight and one d theta become d theta minus one by eight cos two theta d theta plus one by 24 limit for zero to two pi d theta. In order to integrate the central integral, there is a deficiency that we must have the derivative of angle here. The derivative of angle here with respect to theta is two. So in order to produce it, I have multiplied with two and divide with two. Now, then please remember that the integration of cos is sine. In the next step, we can perform the integration. One by eight remain as it is. Integration of d theta is theta for the limit zero to two pi minus one over 16, integration of cos of two theta into two will be sine of two theta for the given limit zero to two pi. And integration of d theta from the last integral is one by 24 into theta for the limit zero to two pi. In the next step, we will apply fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit in each term. So in each term, when we apply the, break, the limits, we have two pi minus zero from the first term, sine of two into two pi, minus sine of 2 into 0 from the second term. And from the last term, we have 1 over 24 into 2 pi. Now sine 4 pi is 0, and sine of 0 is also 0. So we have pi by 4 from the first term, and pi by 12 from the third term. Making a simplification by taking the LCM, we have our answer as pi over 3. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your friends. Allah Hafiz.